Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. And this time, it's another one by request. We're going back to Howlin' Wolf and a song that is now a kind of current. Again, a lot of uh, big time bands are doing this tune, Hidden Charms. It's a pretty strange tune and um, there's a lot to talk about. It has a five bar intro, which who knows why that was, but there you have it, the magic of chess records. Um, you'd think it would be a four bar intro, but it turns out that it's five, but I'm sure you could do it as four. It's not that big a deal. It's in D. And, um, you know, Hubert is just, Hubert Sumlin is just irrepressible on this. And, and um, just, uh, he really cuts loose on this. It's a real special solo he takes. You know, it's a two and a half minute song with about a 48 second guitar solo. So really, his little star turn um, is like the bulk of the song, practically. Other than that, it's an eight bar blues that goes to the five first, just like a song like, like My Babe does. Um, My Babe's a 16 bar. So this is like My Babe cut in half, you could put it that way. So if you just do this, this is the simplest little part ever. That's the top part of the D chord. And then you sort of do, it's just like if you were in, in your campfire days and you went. I went E, A, E. So this is just the bar version. And I would recommend using your thumb on the D string and get used to it on this song because it plays a big part in the funkiness of this guitar solo, which we're going to get to. So lips are sweet. Da -da -da -da. I think about her. That's all I do. And then you could do this, which is I call it the last night chord. Um, it's here's a, the C seventh shape moved up where the root is on the twelfth fret of the A string. So that's an A chord, right? Does that make sense? This chord, the C seventh shape, moved all the way up here. And now for what I call the last night chord, because it's in the Little Walter song, Last Night, I'll take these two fingers, put them on the 12th fret, third finger 12th fret of the G string, pinky 12th fret of the E string. You just have a nice loose right hand on this. It's not so exact. It's not. It's like, no, no, no. And then there's a G version of the uh, that C7 shape. What thrills me down? Here's your head, Charles. Who we would be. Here's, he's already hinting. He's chomping at the bit the whole way through doing things like. Notice how it's not. The point is, like, he has varying dynamics within his phrase that brings it to life. And then it starts out real loud, then he backs up. He's kind of like a jack in the box. Like, it's like when he does his, um, his vibrato here. Ooh, wee, what a be? And he goes. There's not a lot of vibrato in this song. You know, I keep talking about how to save your vibrato for the pressure points and for the uh, exciting, most exciting moments. And this is definitely an example. Try a real slow one. And then there's this one. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm just gonna walk through the whole thing. My voice is so soft. Like the morning. I think about her. That's all I do. And then. She we can walk in my arms. Here's another alternate. You could do this. I think I heard this once or twice in there instead of this. G7 down here. What moves me, darling? I love the way that the drums are so light. And then Helen Wolf's voice is so big. It's like this elephant tiptoeing through a song, kind of, if that makes any sense. And, and he's also singing about this woman's beauty, 
but he's still rah, rah, rah. so it's kind of like Beauty and the Beast or something. I mean, there's there's mm. just an incredible comic um, effervescence in this song, you know, which is it's that's the charm of the song, I guess. So what moves me down is a hidden charms. Here's the Jack in the Box. <laughs> And then the other one is this. See if you can do that with one hit with your fingers. Everything else you had to do with your left hand. No vibrato. That didn't sound right, did it? Ooh wee, what a made. Then just play a D seventh, dry as a bone. Sorry. And then to get out of it, you go, get it. And then here comes, it's go time. So what I did was, I tried learning the solo note for note. And honestly, it's too long and it gets like too chaotic for me to just totally commit it to memory. Um, God knows I tried. So I gave up. So what I did was I did a loop with a little bass line. <laughs> Something real simple. And then this. And so I'm just gonna go for it, okay? I'm turning up my looper now. the thread a little bit um that's okay here's a lot of amazing things in this solo and there's a fascinating thing that he does kind of like that so think about it at the same time. everything is like that's that's a 12th and 13th fret and then try to bend there or a vibrato time I'm gonna go a little bit slower so let I'm gonna first of all hit the bass notes and go now I'm gonna switch over here and do the port Now 
let's go. So the ending, it's like an 18 bar solo. He just went till he basically ran out of steam, kind of. And then he just ended it. Hey guys! So the A shape open. And that just let everybody know to come right back. So that's the way this song goes. And uh, what a blast of a song. I'm sorry if I can't really like nail it down and kill it. It's just too, too long and complicated, but you know what it reminds me of? A while back I did a lesson on Busy B by B Houston, which is another jam in one chord. The whole song, the one that goes. And um, it's all about playing over that groove. So really this is like a groove guitar lesson. It's a nice limitation to work in to make you really come up with something good. Just to stay on one chord and say, go, one chord, dude, no pick. Go for it, you know. And you know, no problem. He ate it for breakfast, I think, right? And his notes are pretty much. He never gets out of this position. Never. He never does this. He doesn't do any of that. He's just staying here. He was like running around like a squirrel in the backyard. <laughs> Loud silence there, right? <laughs> and he repeats licks a lot on purpose, you know, to, to, you know, say, I really mean that. And so there's a whole lot you can do with one chord over one groove in, um, in one position. So uh, I love this tune and... You know, if you have any Hubert stories or anything like that, I'd definitely put them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and uh, see you next time. And do subscribe to my YouTube channel.